My brothers and my sisters, we have assembled tonight to celebrate the Last Supper. Jesus held with his disciples. Let us worship the Lord. Amen. Yes. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, mm. nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me in void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper yes, in the thing for which I sent it. My brothers and my sisters, we will follow the worship bulletin with the few uh, Adjustment, uh, the, the evening prayer will be led by Elder Isaac Kimball from the Miracle Temple uh, Church of God in Christ. Um, and then uh, for the benediction, we have the Reverend Dr. David Washington, interim pastor at St. James Missionary Baptist Church. Let us follow the worship bulletin as printed. God bless. Invocation. Let us look to the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, come and let us magnify the Lord, for he is worthy. He is the mighty king of glory. And the question went out and asked, who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He is the king of glory. And we have entered into his presence to say, Father, we adore you. We magnify you and we glorify you. We honor you on this evening. We ask, oh God, that you will have your way. Yeah. Father, we pray that you will move in this place. Allow a fresh anointing to fall. We pray, God, for healing. We pray for deliverance. We pray, oh God, for your mercies to continue to show us over and over again just how great and marvelous you are. Yeah. God, you be glorified in this place and we shall praise your righteous and holy name from the depths of our heart you are worthy to be praised worthy to be praised worthy to be praised worthy to be praised in Jesus name and we all say amen
Oh, our Heavenly Father, you have allowed us to come into this place. Yes, God. You woke us up this morning with our heart and our mind set on you. Yes, you the one that opened up our eyes that we were able to see. Yes. You gave us our ears that we may be able to hear. Yes, God. You gave us our hands that we may lift up and glorify your name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for another day's journey. We thank you because you allowed us to come into this house. We thank you because you allowed us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we thank you, Lord, because it is your opportunity that you have given unto us. That we may worship you and praise you in the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus that we're able to come out. It's the name of Jesus that we're able to worship you. It's the name of Jesus that we're able to love our family. It's the name of Jesus that we're able to rise up. It's the name of Jesus that we're able to walk holy. My God, my God, we are blessed because we serve a mighty good God. It's your blood. It's the blood of Jesus that was laid down that you and I may get up and worship him. My God, my God, we thank you, Lord, for this night. This night, we come out, Lord, to celebrate you. This night, we come out, Lord, to lift you up. This night, oh, Lord, this night, my God, my God, you watch over us. You kept us. You blessed us. Not only us, but you blessed our family. You blessed our children. My Lord, we ask you that we assemble in this house. We ask for the blood of Jesus to protect us in this community. Protect us in this city. Protect us everywhere we go. That we will lift up the name of Jesus. My God, my God, my God, my God. When the man of God come forward to bring forth the word of God, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost oh, that work is him by moving him preach preach the word preach the word preach the word that somebody somebody will receive this word and be delivered and set free in Jesus name Amen
amen, 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 amen. Yeah. Sounds like that, that what you want to just get up and preach, right, Brother Curtis? Yeah. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Yes, Lord. The scripture lesson. The scripture lesson for the evening is coming from the book of John, the 13th chapter, verses 21 through 30. Hear ye the words of the Lord. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. So Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may, though he may die, he shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God, who is to come into this world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into town, but he was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with him in the house and confident her when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her saying, she is going to the tomb to weep there. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. To the presidents, Reverend Ewell, to the esteemed ministers and reverends here tonight and to each of you. How do I appropriately introduce a man of God who is multidimensional? Some of you know him as a social activist who served as the president of Norwalk's chapter of the NAACP. Some of you know him as the former chaplain to Norwalk's fire department. Perhaps some of you might know him as the pastor who was appointed by Senate Majority Leader Bob Duff to serve as a member of Connecticut's Judicial Selection Commission. Yeah, yeah. Maybe some of you know him as a native of Chicago, Illinois, and a Chicago Bears fan. Is it possible that some of you know him as a fierce advocate for Norwalk's children and youth? I recently read a letter that Dr. Curtis wrote 13 years ago, March 23rd, 2011, to the Appropriations Committee. In it, he said, I am a product of public education, but I have had and have gotten to a place that I found myself utterly frustrated and angry with the nonsensical achievement gap, suspension rate, the disgraceful dropout, and graduation rates specifically for children of color. Did I mention that some of you may know him as one who always fought for justice for our black and brown children who have been habitually marginalized and mistreated even in this very community? Now, while Reverend Curtis wears and has worn many hats, and so many others, his most important assignment is that of being a pastor. Yeah. He is a man of God who has been preaching over 50 years. Yeah. He is the pastor of the greatest church, yeah. my dad, yeah. greatest church, Norwalk, Connecticut, Grace Baptist Church. Here is my pastor. And I consider it a privilege to serve as an associate minister at Grace Baptist Church. I want to share with you this quote that I found before I take my seat from a pastor out of England. He said, if people leave worship saying, what an amazing preacher, we have failed. Instead, we must long for them to say, what a great God and what a privilege it is to meet him in his word as we have just done. A good teacher clears the way, declares the way, and then gets out of the way. Pastor Curtis is a great preacher who will do just that. After this
this next election, the next voice you will hear, will that be of the great Reverend Dr. Lindsey E. Curtis. I pray you receive his word. Say amen. amen. Sir, say amen again. Come on, boy. Nothing but the blood. Y'all know I'm from the country, right? So I say nothing but the blood. Come on. Come on, Cavern. You know this too. Come on, Gary. What? What? Can't wash away my feet. Nothing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus. What? What? Can make, make me whole? Me whole. Put your hands together, y'all. gonna help us? I said, are you gonna help us? All right, Sopranos, y'all show how it go. Then I want y'all to sing it, all right? Sopranos, sing it. Now y'all sing. All right, all right. All right. Come on, put them hands together, y'all. All right. Altos, where you at? Where you at, Altos? All right, I'll see you back there. All right, Altos, come show your hand, y'all. Y'all know how I go already. All right, let them sing it, y'all. Let them sing it. All right, all right. Y'all know how I go already. 
I'll say it one more time. All right, all right. If I put them hands together, tell us where you're at. All right, tell us. Put it all together. Are you ready? All right. Sopranos, there are sopranos. Come on, sopranos. Our right, altos, come on in. Come on in. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Sounds like some folks want to have church. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, choir. Please be seated. Please be seated. Thank you, choir. And um, I know these pastors will forgive me, but I want to thank the greatest church intergalactically. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not talking about Norwalk or Connecticut. Northeast, I'm talking about intergalactically. They have blessed me in ways beyond description. They have put up with me for 20, going on 23 years now. I am so grateful to them. I see not only our choir, I see a few grace, graceites in the, in the pews. And I see one of my favorite ladies, Cutie Mae, amen. Love you, Mom. Amen. Amen. Yes. Let us pray. Most gracious. Hallelujah. Dear God, we ask your will, your way. You've given me the words. Now give me the ability to present it. To present it as you have given it. We know, Lord, that there is somebody in need of this word. Beginning with this preacher. We thank you. Now, Lord, bless this waiting congregation as they may leave here knowing not that I spoke, but that you spoke. And consequently, Lord, none of me, but rather all of thee. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we say amen. amen. Give me an honor to our president, Roosevelt Yule, pastor, certainly to our host the Calvary Baptist Church along with your interim <laughs> pastor <laughs> Pastor Carlton Giles Amen, Amen Now I would like to take my time but I was told early on <laughs> that Connecticut the women are playing tonight The men? The men too? 
Men too? Lord have mercy. Yeah. Only you, Lord. Only you. If y'all got to go, you got to go. But I'm going to finish this message. <laughs> Feel free. Just hold that one finger out and tip on out. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. I call your attention. I thank um, Reverend Lee for reading the scripture. I think I gave her the wrong passage. And... Um, it wasn't intended because it was stepping all over tomorrow. Amen. But we want to stay with Monday, Thursday and what happened here. And thank you, Dr. Gibson, for your heartfelt, and I know it is heartfelt, introduction. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, the Gospel of John. 13th chapter, verses 21 through 30. Yeah. And it reads this way, new, the New Revised Standard Version. After saying Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Verily I say unto you, one of you will betray me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, we know that to be John, was reclining next to him. The King James Version says it a little bit better. He was leaning on the bosom of Jesus. Simon Peter therefore mentioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he writes... He says, I ask, and what really got me in the King James Version, it also says he, yeah, yeah. which means that John was speaking in the third person. Yeah, yeah. He said, he asked him, Lord, is it I? Yeah. Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread which I have dipped in the dish. So when he had heard, when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon. It's a chariot. And he received the piece of bread. Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, do quickly what you're going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what you need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. Verse 30. So after receiving the piece of bread, He immediately went out, and it was night. I want to talk to you a few moments about a dead man walking. A dead man walking. On this Holy Thursday, 2024, so much is dark for so many in this world newspaper articles, magazine cover stories, television reports, and website blogs cannot come close to summing up the devastation that so many of us are now facing around the world. Most recently, my heart went out watching our brothers and sisters in Haiti. And that devastation, that, that poverty, is worse than we can ever imagine. On this Holy Thursday, many face the inevitability of their dark Fridays. Amen. We must never get so holy that we cannot see that pain of our brothers and sisters. The pain on so many levels, so many places 
is heart-wrenching. We can't minimize it. The fact of the matter is we can't pray it away. We can't even preach it away. To whom shall we turn? To whom can we go in times like these? Is there a refuge when things take a turn for the worse? Or is ours the fate that Judas faced? The news of the day is simply there's a dead man walking. <laughs> Judas is such a controversial figure in Christendom that much mystery and discussion continue around the world yeah. and around him. Who, who, who is Ju Judas? Yeah. There is much about him that we simply do not know. Uh -huh. We really don't know what Issacariot means. Some say it simply means the town from which he came. Yeah. Others say Judas simply means Judas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's associated with his vileness of his deed. Uh -huh. Judas to them means that he is the one who gave Jesus over. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder do we have any Judases here? We do not really know even how Judas died. In the scriptures, we're giving a couple of different versions. Matthew says that he hanged himself. While Luke, in the first chapter of Acts, says he fell headlong and burst open. We do not really know his motive for handing Jesus over to his enemies. I have previously attempted to defend Judas by saying he was trying to save Jesus, but really and truly was he? Some say he did it because of the love of money. Matthew says he betrayed his Lord for 30 pieces of silver. While John outright calls Judas a thief. Some say he had a secret grief toward Jesus that he could not overcome. Albert Camus writes in his novel, The Plague, that there is a name, a character, Cotard, who has a secret grief. While he does not reveal to anybody what the grief is, it affects how he interacts with everyone. Camus ascribes this imperfection of character for he recognizes that such a complaint is common to the human condition we all have a secret grief yeah, you can't look around and point the finger at anybody because the secret grief might be envy it, it might be jealousy it might be an intent to destroy whatever you want to call it. It's a secret grief. It affects what we do to people and what we do for people. A secret grief. We've got people that we would do for, but because we hold a grudge that's been lasting for 20 years, we refuse to help. The nature of Judas's secret grief, we do not really know. It is impossible, it is possible that he was troubled that the Christian movement had not taken more of a political turn. Or maybe he even had trouble with Jesus' claim that he was the Messiah. Talking about jealousy. Perhaps he saw the claim as just demagoguery by another so-called leader claiming that he had come to save. Uh, both Luke and John simply ascribe the diabolic motives to betrayal by saying that Judas betrayed Jesus when Satan entered into him. I wonder, does anybody know anything about that? You just come out of church, the choir sung, the deacons prayed, the pastor preached, and you met somebody in the parking lot. You didn't even get home yet. And Satan entered in. 
But according to our text, Joyce, I'm trying to move on. I really am. This one thing, this one thing we do know about Jesus is that he rejected Jesus by leaving the table and walking out into the night. I tell you, Pastor Giles, dead man walking. What is, what is, what is our, well, I confess, what is my continued fascination with Judas? Some 2,000 years have come and gone since Jesus gained notoriety by such, um, Judas gained notoriety by such dastardly and devious deeds, handing our Lord over to his enemies. But even with the passing of the years, there is something, something about Judas that is absolutely offensive and frightening. You ever met anybody that their whole persona is offensive? And because it's offensive, the way they talk to you, the way they walk past you, it's just downright offensive. And there are some people that might be taller than you, wider than you, and it's absolutely offensive, but it's also frightening. We find him, Judas, people that walk with you, commune with you, offensive, secret griefs. Ah, we are offended by that for most of us can identify with the pain being turned on by a friend. We can handle that. But, 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 but the wounds inflicted also by a friend seem to go deeper and hurt more than the wounds inflicted by someone we care about. That's why, that's why Grace hears it all the time. That's why we got to be careful talking about folk behind their back. And some folk in the church are so bold, they'll talk about you to your face. David, David, David helps me out in the 55th number of Psalm. It was not my enemy who reproached me. For then I could bear it but it was my friend. Lord have mercy. So we are offended by Judas because we love the Lord, number one. Because Judas of what he did to our friend. I'm more enlightened by both personal and professional pain. In fact, Judas not only offends us, But as I said, he also frightens us. For Judas is an unpleasant reminder to all of us that on any given day, a faithful follower like you and me could turn from following Christ and stumble out into the night. A metaphor is being caught up in the power of the prince of darkness and be led quickly to his death. A dead man walking. He frightens us even more when we try to put distance between ourselves and somebody like Judas by pointing out all that was wrong and rotten about him. We say Judas allowed himself to be used by one who is opposed to the things of God. But we all have some guilt There's all some blood on our hands. Mm. Mm -hmm. Judas allowed himself to be co-opted by the one, the prince of darkness, who is opposed to the things of God. We all, we all, we all, at some point in our lives have been used to that which is antithetical to God. Yeah, nobody will know. We'll sneak around here and sneak around there. Nobody will know. We put on our nice tie. I wore my best tie tonight. 
we all at some point in life have allowed ourselves to be taken over by evil schemes, harmful suggestions, and misguided intention. We say Judas lacked honesty and integrity. How many of us lack honesty and integrity? All I'm asking you to do is take a self-analysis. Don't be sitting here tonight so high and lifted like you've never stumped your toe. Like you've never run up against a wall. Like you've never had any issues in life. All of us. Judas, Judas, Judas lacked honesty and integrity for he stole from the money box. Which he had responsibility over. How many of us have said, yes, I'll be there and never show up? How many of us have have promised even the pastor that I'm going to get better? And we got worse. We all have some things for which we are now ashamed. We say Judas was small-minded. I I don't have this in in, in my manuscript, but 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 but, but small minded folk yeah, yeah. bother me deep. Yeah. Small minded folk yeah, yeah. who cannot see so. the possibilities. Yes, Pastor Washington, they but they have the audacity yeah. to tell you uh-huh. what God can do. Yeah. Yes, I have a problem. When people shrink God and make him small, I have a problem with folk who are always trying to put you in the right spot, always telling you, but I serve an awesome God. I serve an enormous God. Judas, Judas, Judas was small-minded, mean-spirited, for he complained. Our preacher last night, Dr. Hobbs, he talked about this briefly. But he complained when the woman anointed the feet of Jesus with a costly bottle of perfume. But we all have to pray from time to time and ask the Lord to help us not to major on minor things. You do know that there are folk who drown in shallow waters, majoring on the minor, telling everybody what they can't do, and yet they don't participate. If everything's going well, if things take a turn for the worse, they stand back and talk about the them and the they. Do not drown in shallow waters. Do not lose our soul behind stuff that doesn't amount to anything. Well, Judas was duplicitous and he was deceitful. On the night of the Lord's Supper when the Lord tried so desperately to reach him, Judas resented and recalled correction and resisted reconciliation. He was stubborn and bullheaded. Know anybody like that in the church? Uh Stubborn and bullheaded? I know we can't say that to them. (laughs) But there have been times I wanted to. Uh Majoring on the minor. Mm. Once he made up his mind. This is what Satan will do to you. Once Judas made up his mind, he could not course correct. He was a dead man walking. In a moment of empathetic truth, I'm sorry to say that we see so much of ourselves in Judas. I can speak for me. Yeah, I can speak for me. I know you've been you've been saved and blood washed, born since. You came out from your mother's womb. I know, I know. And so for whatever reason, Judas decided to walk out on Jesus. 
Can you imagine that? That he walks out on Jesus, he turns from the light, yes, sir. lost his way, stumbled out into the night. What you may ask would entice a person to turn away from Christ. Yes. Some people turn away from Jesus out of disillusionment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They thought that the Christian religion offered immediate rewards. Right. Every time, and even when I was writing this, um, Pastor Giles, I thought about my grandma. Yes. Um, you know, they did these collard greens. <laughs> and she would get those collard greens out the backyard. Amen, Sister Robinson. And she would get those collard greens. And, 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 and I'm a northern boy um, with southern roots. But, 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 you know, I like meat and potatoes. That's me. That's it. But, but, but the second day, I know you're a cook. The second day with those collard greens. And with Jesus... With Jesus, sometimes you got to give him time. Sometimes you got to sit down and be patient with him. Let him turn those collard greens into some nice pot liquor. Put some rice underneath that. Let me move on. I just got, no, I just got hungry. They thought that Christian religion offered immediate results with little sacrifice, no cost. Anything that doesn't cost you anything, watch out. Except for the salvation of Jesus Christ. Some turn away from Christ when confronted with some unexpected loss or horrific ordeal in their lives and because they were caught off guard they think Jesus was also caught off guard and does not care can I tell you it's not so they seem unaware of the fact that nothing takes our savior by surprise and that Jesus cares for us when no one else does nothing takes him by surprise in fact, he loved us before we loved him. And then, as strange as it may seem, people turn away from Christ because they say they want more out of life. What a convoluted, convoluted way to think. I, too, have said I just want peace. Yeah, I, I've said that. I, too, have said I just want to be happy. I've said that. Yeah. I've said I, I just, I just want to be still for a moment. I want to shut this thing off. People who talk like that believe that they have outgrown the Christian faith. Oh, help us, Lord. They believe that there are other avenues and interests that can speak to their condition better than the claims of Christ. Yeah. Oh, I'm just trying to describe perhaps where Judas was. Yeah. Whatever the reason, when you turn from Jesus, the tide will turn for yes, the worse. John says when Judas walked out that night, when John says it was night, he was not just simply saying and calling our attention to the clock. But he is calling our attention to the condition of the individual as well as our world, spiritual state, that he would leave the table. The scriptures doesn't tell us. Did he push his chair back? Did he turn it around? Doesn't tell us how he got out of, got away from the table. It just says that he went out the door. But the thing that I want to leave with you tonight. Don't get up from the table. Stay at the table. When Judas, when Judas, by his own choice, turned from Christ, he cast his soul into a spiritual abyss. Yes, sir. 
And therefore he suffered the worst of the darkness has to offer. I'm coming on in. There is a movie, not the one you're thinking, but there's a movie that came out in 1995 entitled Dead Man Walking. It is a story of a man on death row who even through, even though he was sentenced to die, he was still alive. He really is dead for he had been sentenced to death by a lethal injection. The title of that movie is True of Judas. For when he got up from the table and walked out into the dark, Judas was a dead man walking. Whenever you turn from Christ, that is all you can be. For Christ is our only hope. There is no other name under the heaven whereby men and women can be saved. Judas sometimes and sometimes we ourselves do not recognize that we are dead individuals walking. No spirit, no excitement, no praise, no joy, no thanking God for what he's done, no giving God the praise for getting you up this morning, making a way out of no way, dead individuals walking. No peace, always stirring up mess. Always stirring up mess. You know how folk in the church stir up mess? They go from one individual to another individual. Contaminating what God has to be careful. They're dead to the leading of the Lord. Dead to deeper purposes. Dead to tender and loving kindness. Dead to God's will and God's way. Just dead. If you walk away from God, then we too become dead individuals walking. A dead society. Folk don't like this when I talk this way, but if we're not careful, in November, it's going to be a dead USA. We ought to be honest about this thing tonight. It's hard, I'm going to be honest, it's hard to follow Christ sometimes. It gets hard as we endure the vulgarities and the vicissitudes of life. Hard as we endure the trials and tragedies. It seems worse than they have ever been. Hard to endure seasons of uncertainty and unexpected occurrences. Hard when it seems that life itself is against us. It appears that there is just no way that things can work out all right. But my recommendation, I have one, if you're interested, I have one, my recommendation, my plea, my prayer is do not, do not, do not leave the table. No matter how, how, how heavy the task, stay at the table. Do not walk out on Jesus. For if you leave Jesus, I submit to you tonight that you are a dead person walking. Holy Thursday, Holy Thursday is a time for us to do this in remembrance of all that Jesus has done for us. Jesus alone is our help in ages past. He is our hope for tomorrow. Whatever you have to endure by staying with the Lord, stay. For he'll make it up to you. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. For all your sadness, if you stay at the table, he'll give you gladness. If you stay at the table, he'll wipe away all your tears. If you stay at the table, he'll make a way out of no way. If you'll give me just a few moments, Uh, Pastor Washington, I think I've missed my exit, but give me a minute. Give me a minute. Whatever you have to do, stay with the Lord. 
He will make it up to you. You remember my friend Job? Job lost everything. And God replaced it. Remember those Hebrew boys? Shadrach, Meshach, and that bad Negro? With the fire seven times hotter, not one hair was sins. If you lose friends, God will raise up new friends. If there's darkness and depression in your life, he'll give you a peace that will pass all understanding. If your name has been muddied and soiled by malicious talk, the Lord will clean up your name. And those who soiled it will live to see it happen. Will you be a dead man walking? No matter how harsh God's correction is. The question is, will you stay? Will you stay? Will you stay at the table? Or will you pout? Take your ball and go home. That'll be a mistake. Let me speak life to you. If you lose your way and are no longer sure which way to turn, the Lord will be a lamp unto your feet. He'll be light unto your path. He alone is our peace. He alone is our hope. He alone is our bright and shining star. If we confront the fear of this gloomy Thursday and a dark Friday, our hearts are hopeful as we anticipate a resurrection Sunday. Whatever comes, stay at the table. Don't give up. I can tell you, it's easy to give up. Yeah, it is. Whether you're standing here or whether you're sitting there. It's easy to throw in the towel. It's easy. My God. I don't ever want to lose the companionship of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you a fact? I've come too far now. I've come too far now to turn around. I do not care what people might say about me. I do not care because I know that God is able and God will deliver me. I don't want to be a dead man walking. I want to tell a dying world about a living Savior. Oh, yes, I do. Do you? Do you? Do you promise that you'll live a life worth telling everybody about? Because the Lord has made a way out of no way. Don't be a dead man walking. But be alive, a well, giving God the glory every moment. I meet people in the hospital all the time, hospital, nursing home, when they wish they could praise the Lord. Some of us sit. So quietly, yeah, yeah. not testifying uh, what God has done. Come on, I don't mind. I don't mind, I don't mind shedding yeah. tears yeah. because all I know yeah. is that He's a waymaker. Yeah. All I know yeah. is that He went to Calvary yeah. for me. Yeah. All I know yeah. that if it had not been yeah. for the Lord on my side. Yeah. Where, where, where would I be? He's been good to me. He's been good to me. He's been good to me.
Let us stand. Dead man walking. What a word. What a word. You don't want to be a dead man walking. My God, no, you don't. Is there one? Because with Christ, there is life on this side and on the other side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there one? The doors of the church are open. You have churches you can choose from. Is there one? You've been walking and going nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with Christ. With Christ, yeah. With Christ, all things are possible. Oh, uh, yes. Don't be a dead man walking. You may be seated. make a dead man wake up that makes him stand up that may God blow his spirit amen thank you Dr. Curtis for allowing God to use you in a mighty way remind us that sometime we get in that mold of allowing the devil to put us deeper but God come to I heard the songwriter say he lifted me. Yeah. I have an easy task tonight and to remind you that tonight is, is an offertorial night that we give from our hearts, mind, and soul. And um, on tonight, I need two people to come up for the pastor and the church. Mm. One from Grace and one from Calvary. Amen. Don't be ashamed. Just run up here. Amen. Amen. Come here. Amen. We want a basket for the preacher. Yeah. Amen. They're labor. Okay. So we should have notice. No problems. We are guided by our ushers at this time.
story. So high, only he could pay the call. The nail that held him to the cross. The nail that held him to the cross. He could have come on down, but the whole world. Still belong, oh, but the ransom was so high, only he could pay the call. Wasn't the nail that held him to the cross? Oh, power, power, Holy Ghost, power, healing. Power. power, soul saving power. 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 power, power to walk right, power, power to talk right, power, power to act right, power, power to act right, power, power to do right, power, power, power to pray right, power, power to act right. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, power. Live right, live right, act right, do right. Nothing but power, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Oh, it was the nails that held him. It wasn't the nails that it wasn't. What the nail? The nails that it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't the nails that well them to the cross yeah it wasn't oh he could have what power holy ghost holy ghost live right do right act right be right power 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 Holy power, Holy Ghost, saving power, 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 power. Oh, it wasn't all the nails that it wasn't all the nails that it wasn't the nails that. Hail him to the cross. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the offering. We thank you for those they gave, those they had it not. Blessed God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 As we prepare our hearts for communion. Please raise your hand if you did not get an element packet when you came in and someone will serve you. Ushers, you have some there. There are a couple of hands in the back. As we prepare ourselves for communion. Immediately following communion, during the post-communion hymn, the ushers will come and collect the debris from you. So please don't just put it down. Don't start moving, just wait. They will serve you as we sing the post-communion hymn. They will come to collect the debris from you. Please make sure you have elements. If you're worshiping with us virtually from home or your office, you may now also prepare by going to retrieve 
some cracker or bread to serve as the symbolic nature of the body of Christ and orange juice or water of your choice to also be utilized during this communion as the president leads us into Holy Communion. Let us prepare our hearts and minds that we might enter into sacred ceremony of the sacrament of the Baptist Church and all churches throughout this country. First Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and verse, starting at verse 23 says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also give unto you, at the very same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, broke it, and blessed it, and said, Take, eat, this do you as often as you eat this in remembrance of me. The scripture go on and said that in like manners he took the cup. This is the cup of the New Testament, shed it in my blood. And for often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. But it also gave us something that is very important. He said, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do it in remembrance of me. But he paused there and said, but let, but let, let us examine ourselves. For he or she that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh unto themselves, not discerning the Lord's body. He goes on to say, For this reason, many are sick and afflicted among you, and many sleep. On tonight, my brothers and sisters, you have the sacrament that was left with the church. And no matter how much we love you as pastors and shepherds and angels of the church, we did not lead the sacrament to you. We did not shed blood for you. We did not sacrifice our body for you. And so when you take it, it's not from the man or the woman who they have administered it, but it's the one who have bled and sacrificed everything for it. And when you partake of it, you ought to do it with the great anticipation that one day, if I hold on long enough, I will see him face to face. If I hold on long enough, I will be able to hear the voice say, well done, my good and faithful servant. If I hold on long enough, I will find myself around the throne of grace singing holy, holy, holy. Great God Almighty, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the cup of the shed blood. Father, bless these sacrament as we partake these sacrament that we do it in remembrance of you. Now God, you prepare these temper that they may receive it in honor of you. We ask this in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let us eat together. Amen. The cup of the shed blood. Some writer came along and said, what shall wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Let us drink together from the cup. Amen. Amen. As we prepare our hearts and minds for the post hymn,
a praise and you retain your cup in your hand until the earth will get to you, let us just take this moment to celebrate the word of God, the proclamation of the word of God, and the deliverer of the word of God, the Reverend Dr. Lindsay E. Curtis and the Great Baptist Church Choir. Amen, amen. You may say. Stand while we sing that song. What? Yeah, what? He died. Oh, I know it. What? Well, look. Came screaming down. The blood came. The blood came screaming down for me. Well, yeah, he died on the cross. Oh, no, it was. Yes, sir. Come on, one more time like you mean it. Oh, uh, back. Well, Leads to Miracle Temple Church of God in Christ, where the Reverend Cotton Jow will be preaching on tomorrow night. See you there. Let the church say, Let the church say, Let the church say. Let the church say, let the church say, let the church say, hey, amen, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Oh, oh yes, indeed. Take it deep. Good job.